Hi, and welcome back to Fundamentals of Bioinformatics. This is part four of my quick introduction to Python 3 programming. In this lecture, I'm going to try and pull together the ideas that we covered in the first three lectures, and I'm going to do that by defining a function that allows us to translate protein sequences from DNA sequences. I'm going to be doing this in a Jupyter Notebook again. This one I'm going to move a little bit quicker and I'm going to be copying some code uh, that I found on the internet and so it's probably not worth trying to follow along with. Instead I recommend just trying to pay attention to what I'm doing and understand um, the different the way the different pieces are plugging together. And here, what we're going to do is define a function that we can use for translating DNA sequences into protein sequences. This is going to be a little bit more advanced, but my goal here is to show you how to pull the pieces together um, on the things that we've been learning to do something that's useful in bioinformatics. Um, and so you'll remember that when we want to translate a DNA sequence into a protein sequence, what we do is um, we use a table that contains the genetic code, so that maps the three nucleotide codons onto amino acids. We would typically start translation at a start codon, and we would end translation when we get to a stop codon. Um, and so I'm just gonna um, sort of work through how I would achieve this problem. Um, and the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna define a list of the nucleotide characters. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is I am going to create a dictionary that maps nucleotides onto single digit amino acid codes. Um, and before this lecture, I went and I found one online. Um, and so I'm gonna copy that in here because it would take me a while to create this myself. Um, I got this um, from somebody's website who is putting together um, uh, bioinformatics Python uh, educational materials, bioinformatics in Python educational materials. Um, and I just want to note that um, when I do this, um, so these two comments, remember we talked about comments in the first lecture, um, are things that I put in there um, to give credit to the person who created this um, and also for my own reference. So when I come back to this and I'm wondering where did I get this code from, um, I've got that right here um, in this little um, block of text where I'm defining it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and execute that. Um, and now that we can use that dictionary to look up the single letter amino acid abbreviations for different codons. Um, so I'll just try a few more or less at random here. Um, and you can see like as I'm looking these up, like here's that AGA, these are defined in this genetic code dictionary. Okay, so what I think I want to do here, um, and I'm kind of, I, do, I don't really have this whole thing planned out, so I just kind of wanted to work through like what my thought process is when I'm developing a little bit of code like this. Um, but I think that um, what I want to do is I want to define a function, and I want to define a function called translate that I can provide a DNA sequence to and have it return a, um, a, have it return a protein sequence. I'm also gonna pass in the genetic code and the nucleotides. And so those will be my three inputs to this function. Um, and then the output that I get will be a protein sequence. Um, and so I'm going to define a function here. Remember I do that with the def keyword. Um, and I will provide a sequence. I'll provide the nucleotides 
and I'll provide the genetic code as input. And now I'm going to start my new indented block. Um, I think the way that I'm going to handle this is um, I need to first identify where the first start codon is in this sequence. Um, and um, what I'll do is um, I'm going to use a function called index. Um, and again, if you were to Google finding a um, string uh, or finding, say, like a substring in a string in Python or finding the first occurrence of a string in Python, you would get a lot of information that would help you figure out how to do this. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say first codon position equals Um, and I know that AUG is my start codon. And actually, before I do this, I'm going to insert a cell above. Or actually, I'll just go ahead. Well, yeah, I'll insert a cell above. Um, and let's just try this out. So this index function, just so we can see what it does. Um, and so if I provide the sequence T-A-U-G-T, -T, and then I say index AUG, what this is returning is the value one. And what that value one is, is it's the position in this sequence where AUG first appears. Um, and so the A begins at position one. And so what that lets me do is it lets me figure out where in the sequence that appears. Um, you can see if I just add a few more T's in there, um, It'll do that. Um, let's also add another AUG in there just so we can confirm that this is just giving us the first one. Um, so we can see if I have TTTT, AUG, AUGT, it's still telling me that position four is the beginning of this substring AUG in this string that I'm providing. Um, now, one thing I just um, want to say, just in case you feel like this is a lot, um, it, it this is a lot. I'm throwing a lot of new ideas at you here. I'm throwing some new functions at you here. Um, don't worry too much about this if you're not following exactly what's going on. Um, try and just try and understand what I'm doing. I don't really expect you to be able to do this on your own. This is not the kind of thing that I would quiz you on. Um, and so don't worry so much if you don't feel like you could reproduce this. Just try and follow along and just see what it is that I'm doing here. Um, okay, so I would have this first codon position. Um, and then what I would do is um, I would probably, once I have that, I want to iterate through my sequence, but I want to do that in um, basically codon units. Um, and so I'm going to show you some other cool functionality here. Um, so before we looked at um, range, um, and so we said range zero, uh, five would give us the number zeros through four. Um, if I said range, say five, 10, that's gonna give us five through nine. There's actually another um, variable that I can use here. Um, and that is the step size through here. And so by default, the step size is one. Um, and so what that does is it gives me every number, five, six, seven, eight, nine. But if I provide an alternate step size, it's going to give me um, steps in here. So it's gonna give me five, 10, 15, 20. So if um, we modified this and said like, I wanna go um, from four to say the end of my sequence, um, I could say, let's see, I could say 
four, well, let's just stick with four to 25 um, right now, and then we'll come back to that in just a minute, um, and go in steps of three, that's gonna give me four, seven, 10, 13, 16, 19, 22. And so four would give me the beginning of my first codon, and then five, six, and then seven would give me the beginning of the next codon in here. And so you can see that this would allow me to iterate through the codons in the sequence. Um, and so the way that I would do that, um, and I realized I need to have the sequence length here. Um, so I will compute the sequence length here by saying sequence length equals, and I'm gonna use another built-in Python function called len. If you were to Google, how do I find the length of a string in Python, you would come across this len function. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say for codon start in range first codon position sequence length because I want it to stop when it hits the end of the sequence um, and then I'm going to say three because that is the length of my codons um, and that will always be the same. So then what I've got is I have the codon start position um, and so what I can do is I can let's just first start by trying to like print out codons. Um, so I will say sequence and I'm going to use some fancy indexing in Python um, so I'm going to say codon start colon codon start plus um, three. Um, now what this does, let's, let's look at that also. Um, so I'm going to do insert cell below um, and let's go up here and I'm going to copy that. I'm going to say sequence, I'll call this one test sequence equals this. Um, and now if I say print test sequence, um, and I use that same syntax, so I'm just going to put values in here this time though, and I say four colon, and I'll just say four plus three, just so it's clear that I'm matching this. This is very similar to the range function um, where I'm providing a start and an end. And so, and the start is inclusive and the end is exclusive. Um, and so what this is gonna do is it's gonna print the positions in this sequence at uh, positions four, five, and six. And so here that's A, U, and G. If I made this seven and seven plus three, that would also give me a UG. Let's, let's just mix that up. Um, oh, and you know what? I just realized I'm mixing <laughs> T's and U's here. Um, so let's make all of these T's into U's. I'm sure somebody caught that and it's been driving you crazy. This is the downside of us not being in person because normally somebody would have yelled at me by now and said that I was doing that wrong. Um, but let's make this one ACC. Um, and so now I'm indexing from my test sequence positions seven through 10, but not inclusive on that 10 side. So it's seven, eight, and nine. Um, and so um, here with this function that I've defined so far, um, I think what should happen is if I say um, translate test sequence, I think what should happen is it should print out my codons for me, um, but we'll see. It's um, often when I'm writing something like this, I'll get an error my first time through and then I'll debug that. Um, oops, and 
that's exactly what happened. I forgot to pass in my nucleotides and my genetic code. Um, okay, and so you can see what happened here is I got AUG, so I got that first code on, I got ACC, um, and then this is actually just printing um, this final U um, because it, uh, I haven't done any check to make sure that I have a full length code on when I, when I slice that out of my sequence. Um, and that's because, so what's happening is, um, so let's actually try that up here. So that would be, um, starting at position 10 and the way this slicing in Python works is that if you have a value that is higher than the position, uh, last position in your sequence or your string, um, it will, it's not gonna throw an error. It's just gonna print everything up until that. And so what we should probably do here is assign this code onto a variable and make sure that it's three bases long. And so what I'll do in my function is I'll say codon equals this. Then I'll say, I now want to do something only if the codon is three bases long. So I'm going to say if len codon equals three, print codon. And so now this function should only print codons that are three bases long. And so you can see how that conditional statement became really important here. Um, and so now it'll print AUG and ACC. Let's go another step further now. Let's actually try and translate this using the genetic code. Um, and so what I will do here is I'm going to say now amino acid equals um, and I'm going to use this genetic code dictionary that we defined above and remember that the way that you um, look values up in there is similar to the syntax for indexing a value from a list. Um, and so I'm going to set amino acid equal to the, uh, the, the value associated with this codon in our genetic code dictionary. Um, if I say print amino acid, um, what this should now do is do the actual translation for me. Um, and I got an error there. Um, Okay, um, and so you may um, have a good idea of why I got this error. Um, think about that for a second, look at my genetic code, look at the sequence that I'm providing, um, and I'm sure if I were in class, a bunch of hands right now would go up and tell me what I'm doing wrong. Um, but of course, I started using use here, and so I was actually doing RNA sequences. Um, but remember, I said I wanted to work with DNA sequences in this exercise. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn all of my U's into T's. Um, Um, and so now if I run this, I'm going to get another error. Um, oh, okay. So, so this is actually an interesting one now, and this is something that I mentioned last time. Um, so I just ran this code here, um, and I see that the error that I'm getting substring not found, and it's pointing to the line where that error was. And so here, I'm saying first code on position equals sequence.index ATG. Come up here, and there's an ATG there. So I know that that sequence, or, or sorry, that substring is in there. But what happened here is I updated this, but I forgot to run this cell. Um, and so 
the very the value for test sequence as far as python is concerned right now still has those u's in it so what i need to do is i need to rerun that cell where i converted the t's or sorry the u's to t's and then if i print out test sequence then that value has been updated I also mentioned that if you run into a situation like this, come up here and just go to kernel, restart and clear output. That'll reset everything in this environment. And now I'm just gonna go ahead. Um, you can see I got that same error because now I'm looking for the value AUG in this sequence. I'm gonna change that to ATG and that makes that error go away. Um, I can run that again, I can run that again, I can run that again, I'll run that. Um, and so now you'll notice like I defined this function, but I haven't actually run the function yet. So I didn't get any output. Um, I'm gonna delete that cell. Um, but now for the first time, I am going to run that function first time in this environment. And you'll see that that translation is now working. And so, our first codon in here. Um, so the ATG, the first codon, beginning with the start codon, is an M. And so if I come up here, you'll see there's that ATG, and that is an M. And our second codon here was ACC. Um, and that is, let's find it in here, ACC, there it is. And so that is a T. And so you can see that I have so far, I have done a decent job of um, creating this function to translate this sequence. Um, let's define another variable here. And I'm gonna call this variable protein. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set that equal to an empty list. And what I can do here is I can say protein dot append amino acid and then I'm going to back out of that indented block I'm going to back out of that indented block and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the return statement to say return protein and that's how I define what my output is in here Um, and so now, if I run that, you can see that I get this list of values. Um, and so that's helpful because we might want to assign that to a variable rather than just print it to the display. Um, okay, so um, that is sort of a quick and dirty translate function. Um, there's a few things that we haven't done in here yet. Um, and that is mainly um, checking for errors that we might run into. Um, and so the um, first error is one that we already actually encountered where I had some um, characters in my sequence that were not valid nucleotides. Um, and so the, um, let's see, um, I'm not thinking of a really easy way to check that right now. I have some ideas, but it might um, be a little bit confusing. So let's let's actually not provide that nucleotides um, list. And so I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to delete that for right now. Um, the other thing, the other error that we might be likely to encounter here. Um, is we might, what ha or sorry, so like what, were, what would happen here if we tried to translate um, a sequence that didn't have, I'm just deleting that nucleotides parameter, but that didn't have a start codon in it. Um, and so imagine that I tried to just translate this sequence here. Oh, and again, um, so again, I my code got out of order. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do kernel um, restart and clear output. And then I'm going to 
run all of my cells. Um, and you'll see that we're getting an error here. Um, and so the there's a few ways that you can handle this, um, but I'm gonna show you a quick one here. Um, and so I'm gonna say, this might not be necessarily the most efficient way to do this, but I'm gonna show you one more conditional that we can try out here. And I'm gonna say if ATG not in sequence return protein and what I need to do is I just need to define protein up here at the top um, and I am going to now just try and make this a little bit more readable um, and so I'm defining my result then I am checking to see whether this sequence has a start code on. Um, and this is another one of those um, statements that evaluates the true or false that I mentioned earlier. And so let's just test that one out like we've done with some other ones. So I'm going to insert cell below. Um, and so what you can do here, so in is a keyword Um, that you can use to test whether some string is a substring of another one. Um, and so here, if I say AAA in ACG AAAT, I'll get a value of true. If I um, say make it so that that um, triple A is not in there, then I'll get a value of false. And you can negate that by saying by putting not in there so i can say if aaa not in this then i'll get a true in this case and if i make it in there then i'll get a false this is like i said it's not the most efficient way to do this um, but it is a pretty quick one and so um, i just wanted to um, get that in there for right now um, and now if i run this again what this is doing is it's returning this empty list to me. Um, and so what the way that I would interpret that um, to get that back from a translate function is that it's telling me that there is no protein translated from the sequence that I provided. Um, so now let's just mess around with this a little bit. And I am just more or less um, putting some random nucleotide characters in here. And at the moment, I don't know if I actually put an ATG in there, but let's run this and we'll see what happens with the translation. Okay, so I must have had um, a start code on in there somewhere. Um, because this is actually translating something for me. Um, if you spend a minute, you could probably scan. Oh, I see one right there. That may or may not be the one. Um, not sure if there's anything before that. Um, but in any case, there is a start code on in here. Um, um, one of the other things we haven't handled yet is a stop code on. And so let me put, um, a stop code on in there. I don't know if this will catch or not. I don't know if I'm in the right reading frame here. Um, so what I'll do is I will just keep adding. Okay, so now um, you can see I've got this stop code on here. So I've got a TGA um, that is following an ATG somewhere downstream, so like in the right reading frame. And what that's doing is it is um, inserting this asterisk character in the middle of my sequence. Um, but you can imagine like that might be another time when we want a conditional statement, like maybe we want to stop translating at that point. Um, and so we could do that with a nested if statement here. And so like in here where we say if when codon is three, we get the amino acid. Um, what I can now say is if 
amino acid equals, whoops, double equals asterisk, I can say return protein. And so what that does is it stops this translation when it gets to that point and it returns the value. Um, and so this return, remember, is a way to end the function and return the output. Um, and so now if I run this, what we should see is that we translate just up until the amino acid before that position. All right, I'm gonna wrap this one up there. Um, the Remember, the goal of this, uh, this last lecture was not that you should be able to do everything I did or even that you should fully understand everything that I did there. My goal is just to show you how you can plug these basic components together that we learned over the last few days to do some very powerful things that can help you automate your analysis and automate your workflow. If you're interested in continuing to learn Python 3, I would recommend exploring some of the resources that we've shared with you in class. This is a great way to um, build very relevant skills for bioinformatics, and it can really, um, while it can seem overwhelming, it can seem challenging, investing some time in this is a great way to start learning these techniques, and it'll really increase your value when you start um, looking for jobs or looking for grad school opportunities. There are tons of folks out there right now who are looking for biologists who have some background in, in programming or some knowledge about uh, programming. And so any work that you're doing to build your skills in this area will pay off. And I like to tell my students that learning to program is a lot like learning to play a musical instrument. When you're first getting started, it can feel very overwhelming, but it is achievable. And if you just put a little bit of time into it every day, even if you just start with, say, 10 or 15 minutes a day, you'll really start building your skills very quickly, and you'll be amazed to see how much you can learn over a relatively short period of time. So if this is interesting to you at all, I really encourage you to dive in and stick with it.